At any given time, there are more than 4,000 children in cancer treatment or follow-up care in this province. About 45% of them are under the age of five, so families can be young and may not be established financially. The most common cancer diagnosis for children is acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL for short. Leukemia is a type of blood cancer that affects the body's white blood cells. To get a glimpse of what is involved with the diagnosis of ALL, we are going to look at one family's experience. I would like to introduce you to the Lacasse family. Mom, Stephanie, Dad, Joel, and their four kids, Zachary, Maxime, Nicholas, and Isabel. One morning, Stephanie sent her son off to kindergarten, put her twin boys in daycare, and brought her three-year-old daughter, Isabel, to the hospital for what she thought was likely a urinary tract infection. Instead, the doctor at her local hospital in Northern Ontario asked her to take a seat. He told her Isabel's red and white blood cells were low and that it was likely cancer. He called ahead to the Northeast Cancer Centre, an hour away in Sudbury, and sent her straight there. After more tests at the Northeast Cancer Centre, Stephanie and Isabel were sent by plane from Sudbury to Toronto. Only one parent was allowed on the plane, so Joel made the six-hour drive to the city. Arrangements were made for Stephanie's mom to pick up and take care of the three other kids. At the time, Stephanie had no idea that she would not return home for close to two months. Hours after she arrived in Toronto, Isabel was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, admitted to the hospital and began intensive chemotherapy. While ALL has a good prognosis and high survival rate, the treatment is long. The first 30 days of treatment for ALL is called the induction phase and is designed to kill the leukemic cells in the blood and the bone marrow, putting the disease into remission. It is a very intense phase of treatment, which includes bone marrow aspirates and lumbar punctures. A lumbar puncture involves inserting a needle into a child's spine in the lower back. This is done to determine if the leukemia has spread to the cerebral spinal fluid. Parents have to sit outside the room when the lumbar puncture is being done, just waiting. This procedure typically takes about five minutes, but when you have just found out that your child has cancer, and this very scary thing is going on behind closed doors, it can feel like hours. That was just the first 24 hours. For the next seven to eight days, Isabel had her blood work done several times a day. She received intravenous hydration and had a port surgically inserted into her chest to make it easier to administer chemotherapy, blood products, and medications. Typically, if an ALL patient remains stable after the first eight days, families are discharged and sent home with oral medications, a medication calendar, return appointment date, usually within a couple days post-discharge, a copy of their protocol for the next month, and an enormous amount of written resources. I say they are sent home, but for families that travel long distances for treatment, like the Lacasse family, this means the Ronald McDonald House, the home of a friend or family member, or a hotel because they will be returning to the hospital a few times per week. Unfortunately, Isabel was not stable after the first week, and she had to remain in the hospital for another 20 days. She developed high blood pressure, severe pains in her belly due to constipation from the drugs, and an infection where the port was implanted to deliver her meds. Isabel also contracted C. difficile, a bacterial infection causing diarrhea. Isabel was finally discharged from the hospital on day 30. Joel had taken a month off work, but financially the family couldn't handle it anymore, so he returned to his job. Stephanie stayed in Toronto, close to the hospital, to care for Isabel for another three weeks of outpatient treatment and care. Parents are often terrified at this point when they have to leave the hospital. They worry that they might do something wrong. They worry their child will become unwell. What if they come into contact with someone who has a cold? POGO Interlink nurses address these concerns and answer the family's questions. We provide ongoing support to these families. We review available resources with them, including POGO's financial assistance program, which many families need because one parent has to leave work to care for their child.
Finally, after 48 days, mom and daughter returned home. Stephanie is still navigating the world of blood tests and chemotherapy while coordinating care for the rest of her family. Luckily, most of Isabel's care takes place an hour away at the Pogo Satellite Clinic at the Northeast Cancer Center in Sudbury. This saves Stephanie the grueling six-hour drive with a nauseous child in the backseat and means more time at home with her kids and husband. As Interlink nurses, we see it all the time. Having a child with cancer takes its toll on the other children, the household, the marriage. But the Lacasse family seem to be getting back to normal, or at least a new normal. Isabel doesn't need to sit on her mom's lap anymore when she gets her blood work done, and she loves taking the bus to school by herself.